the Galaxy J6 Plus is here and I could waste your time unboxing it. I even have the footage and all that. But I feel the best thing to do here is talk about what the Plus means. Is this better value than the J6? What has Samsung done? Let's take a close look. Hey guys, Ash here from C4 Retech and let's get started. If you do end up liking what you see, please turn on notifications by clicking that bell icon. And of course, car to a monthly giveaway in case you missed it. Now let's start with the pros. The build looks great, more premium than it should be for the segment. Glass to the front and back, the plastic sides do take away a little something, but for the most part, the J6 Plus looks fantastic. It's heavier thanks to the higher capacity battery and larger display, so it weighs more around 180 grams, but it is sleek and feels premium in hand. Now, just like the A7 2018, Samsung's gone with a fingerprint scanner to the side here. Now, some of you pointed out that it is slow in the A7 video, but I mean, yes, it is, but it feels like a step up in speed and accuracy compared to Samsung's last gen fingerprint scanners, the ones to the back. So I'm going to call this one a pro. And finally, the cameras, we have two to the back, a primary 13 megapixel f1.9 with a secondary 5 megapixel depth sensor. Now the cameras here are good, not me A2 good, but quite good. Uh, the dynamic range is a little lacking, but the detail, the bokeh, that's all there. Color reproduction is on point too. Additionally, the portrait backdrop option from the A7 makes its way over here, allowing you to create images like these. And the portrait dolly feature that I loved is also present here. Surprisingly, Samsung's also included the option to tweak the bokeh. The selfie camera, it's a 8 megapixel f1.9 shooter and it gets the job done. It has a selfie focus option too. And that pretty much sums up the positives. Now for the cons. To start with, the display. Though the size has gone up to 6 inches, the resolution has remained the same, HD plus or 720p. Now for a phone priced at 17k, that's frankly sad. And compared to the J6, it loses out on AMOLED. Samsung's instead using an LCD panel here. Similarly, Gorilla Glass is replaced by Dragon Trail and Samsung's calling pretty much everything an infinity panel now. Seems like it doesn't even need to be AMOLED anymore. At least there is an auto brightness sensor this time. That's something good. Finally, Samsung's throwing that in. And for a 720p LCD panel, it happens to be a good one. Now, this move to LCD is almost forgivable compared to the choice of chip inside. Well, we have complained a lot about Samsung overusing the Exynos 7870 in the past. This time, I almost missed the 7870. That's because we've got a Snapdragon 425 chip on the J6 Plus. Now, this is a two-year-old chip, a quad-core chip. When was the last time you saw a quad-core chip on a 17K phone? Now, to give you some perspective, uh, here is how it ranks. Above the 425, we've got the 430. Above that, we've got the 435. And above that, the 450. And then the 625. Now, the Exynos 7870, old as it might be, is an octa-core chip that slots somewhere between the 450 and the 625. And that's on the 13K J6. But for some reason, Samsung's thrown in a Snapdragon 425 here, a chip that's a whole four levels lower. I mean, it, if it were to, you know, do a little bit of comedy here. I have to say somebody ordered a 625 and they delivered a 425 and they thought, hey, let's just roll with it. You know, because for the price, this just doesn't work out. As expected, the phone struggles, stutters are common. And here's a fun fact. Remember how the Galaxy A7 came with Samsung Experience 9 on top of Android 8? Well, this one comes with Samsung Experience 9.5 on top of Android 8.1. What are you doing, Samsung? Of course, the regular omissions are present here. Haptic feedback is cut, depreciated pro mode for camera, NFC is not there, no MST, it's Samsung Pay Mini, you know, you, you know what I'm talking about. Overall, from a performance standpoint, the J6 Plus makes me miss the J6 and I did not like the J6 to begin with. Oh, and by the way, we get 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of onboard storage, all this backed up by a larger 3300 milliamp hour battery. Now, the J6 Plus is aimed at the offline segment and I can almost hear the sales guy going, Sir, Snapdragon chip, sir. Dual camera, infinity panel, just like S9. Very powerful, sir. 4 GB RAM. I mean, that's how they're planning to sell it, I guess. I really feel Samsung needs to stop building phones that sell sales guys offline can market to a 
uh, uninformed audience and instead focus on building phones which even if it's priced higher than the competition are good phones. Now I don't expect Samsung to sell at Xiaomi prices or even Oppo Vivo prices. You know Oppo Vivo have, are, have been being a little more competitive these days. I don't even expect that. If Samsung can offer something like a V11 Pro, an equivalent of a V11 Pro, uh, Vivo offers it at 25. I'm okay paying 30, 35 for Samsung. But these kind of phones with like a Snapdragon 425, which even Qualcomm has realized is a super old chip and they've replaced it with a 427, a quad-core chip. There's a newer uh, starter quad-core chip from Qualcomm, but Samsung's thrown in the 425 for some reason here. And I can't help but feel disappointed for, uh, in the J6 Plus. Uh, it does have its positives. Yes, the build, the fingerprint scanner, the camera features, and to an extent, even the camera itself. But the sad little chip inside and the trade-off from AMOLED, to LCD that kind of makes this impossible to recommend. So there you go, a quick video on Samsung's latest mid-ranger. What do you think of this? Do you, do you hate anyone enough in your life to actually recommend this to? Let me know in the comments below. Jokes apart, just let me know your thoughts. And with that, it's time I bid you adieu. Thumbs up, thumbs down, based on what you think about this video. Not the phone, but the video. Subscribe and turn on notifications by clicking that bell icon. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, my name's Ash, you've been watching C4 Retech, and I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.